Okay, so so the idea is today is to look into this effective field theory in a, in a little bit more detail. Um, and my main um, aim is to uh, explain why um, the EFT is a powerful tool in terms of being able to resum logarithms, large logarithms. Um, so uh, hopefully I'll get that across to you. Um, yeah, so yesterday uh, we talked about the Kisti Lagrangian, renormalizing the uh, symmetries in the Kisti Lagrangian, then how to renormalize it, and how we can obtain the beta function and the anomalous dimension of the, of the masses, um, and how we can resum uh, these uh, to go from one scale to another and resum the logs. Uh, which may arise. So, so now we're going to be looking more into effective field theory in a bit more detail. So I just gave you a little bit of an introduction to, to what that is. Um, but there's one more thing I'd like to say. Uh, so that is that in, in quantum field theories, uh, so I might have mentioned this yesterday, but in quantum field theories, you have many different scales which enter the certain calculations. Um, and that means that taking into account all the possible virtual states is quite complicated and that perturbation theory might break down due to these large logs. So effective field theories provide a solution, a set of general set of frameworks which can deal with this large scale problem. It's sort of an organizational scheme that uh, we can remove the modes in the theory that don't really matter at the scale being probed. Um, okay, so let me just quickly write that down and then we can get on. So um, in, in QFT, there are multiple scales. So that means taking into account All virtual states is a complicated problem. As per basically because perturbation theory will break down. Due to large algorithms. So EFT provides a solution um, that is a general set of frameworks to deal with this. Multi scale problem so it's an organizational scheme whereby we remove modes in theory which are irrelevant at scale being built. Okay. So the most uh, commonly used EFT in B physics is um, a Fermi-like theory where you have four fermion operators. Um, and all the modes above the B called mass are integrated out. Uh, 
Okay. So I guess most of you have already seen um, the derivation of this formal theory, um, at least for some case, but I'm not sure how many of you will have seen also already the calculation of one loop physical corrections to that. But I'm not going to calculate them really, I'm just going to talk about them and talk about their structure in terms of the logarithms. Um, Okay, so so for a generic BDK at tree level, we can write the <coughs> we can write the decay in in the full theory. So B goes to some fermion one, which has to be equal to the you call for the C corp. Then we have the W, and then we have two other fermions here. So these might either be lepton neutrino or they might be an up and down type corp. So this diagram, as I'm sure you know, can be written in terms of some uh, four fermion operator. And the coupling of this operator is a Wilson coefficient, which is just the Fermi constant, plus some uh, CKM elements, which I'm not going to mention. So here we have the weak couplings. Um, And now we want to do some sort of matching between the full theory and the effective field theory. So of course you can write down the, the couplings and the propagator for this W boson. We have something like this. So we call this PI and this PF. And in the case that we're, we're talking about, where we're talking about a B decay, so the momenta of the B, uh, B core and the final state core are going to be much smaller than the W mass nominee. Uh, we can just ignore the, the momenta at leading order, and we can rewrite this as just IG squared over NW squared. So this is like this. Okay, and and this must be equal to the the coupling in the effective field. So um, that scales much below the W mass. We can ignore external elements. So the 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 W is that no longer. So the W goes on is no longer an if um an active degree of freedom right, dynamic. Uh, and it can be absorbed into <coughs> So 
So this Fermi top plane, which is equal to G squared, again, what is it? And this effective coupling was, as most of you probably know, called the racing coefficient. And what are the mass dimensions of this coupling? It's called theta minus two. Okay. Great. Um, so can someone tell me, uh, I, I find that the, the mass dimensions of the Fermi constant are minus two. Um, what are the mass dimensions of a full Fermi operator, the most simple type? Perfect. Yeah. Okay, yeah, perfect. So, so, so then this mass dimension of minus two is what more or less what we expect. Um, so, so that's, that's very good. Um, okay, so that was just the, the introduction to make sure everyone had uh, seen that and is starting from the same place. Um, okay, so, so this is very nice because using this effective field theory with the four fermion operators, it makes the calculations much easier. If you have to calculate the W propagator and all that, things have become, things are much more complicated, well, not much more, but things are quite a bit more complicated. Now our theory is pretty simple to do calculations in. Okay, very good. So, so what about wanting to correct this, um, this effective field theory, there's two ways you could correct it. One way is to include higher operators, so higher dimension operators. And the other way is to correct the listen coefficients um, in, uh, in order alpha s, okay? So, so in order to go to higher order in alpha s, we again have to do some sort of matching, we need to look at uh, QCT corrections to the full theory and to the effective field theory. So let's have a look. So here I'm gonna be interested in the in the QCT corrections that give rise to large logarithms. So a ratio of MW and MB. <clears throat> okay, so, so in order to get this logarithm, we need to make a gluon like this, parallel to the W boson. There we have the W. Okay, and, and in the EFT, it looks similar. We can draw the same one between the first legs. Okay, so it turns out that when you calculate this correction in the full theory, it turns out to be finite, so there's no there's no divergence. And what does it look like? It, as we said, it contains a large log. And it looks something like some proportional to some constant lambda. Okay, so we put i and log of mw squared over mb squared. So these are exactly the large logs that we were talking about. And so they have to be resumed because the, the size of the log um, uh, cancels the suppressing power of the alpha s. Uh, 
Okay, very good. So now let's look at what uh, what this a loop diagram is like in respect to field theory. Um, it looks something like this. Sorry. Okay. So what's happened here? Now, uh, okay, before, before I explain what's happened here, I just want to go back a little bit and uh, have another look at alpha s. Okay, so maybe something that I didn't explain quite clearly not yesterday is how solving the renormalization equation can lead to um, the ability to resum these large logs. So to see this, uh, we look at the solution to the RGE again, not the one that I wrote down yesterday, but the solution at leading order of the alpha S at the scale mu compared to alpha S at the scale NZ. Okay, so this is probably a, an equation like we're all familiar with. It's the way that you go from one square to another for alpha s at leading order, and from the scale nz to the scale mu. So what happens when we expand this equation in alpha s, the right hand side? We get something like this. Okay. So what you see here is by using this solution of the RGE equation, what we actually do is we resum all logs that go like alpha s to the n, log to the n. Um, so clearly solving the renormalization of the equation is in fact a method of resumming the logs as we want. So we solve by taking the leading order solution, we resum all of the leading logs. So the ones that go to alpha s to the n to the log to the n. Okay, so as we said before, for a generic, uh, but I'm gonna make it a bit more explicit. So for a generic Green's function, um, the, the log part goes something like this. some coefficient. So here delta is some hierarchy of scales, some ratio of two scales. Um, so any Green's function can be written as a sum of the alpha s's, so that's the perturbative series, going from n equals one to infinity, and then also the sum over um, these logarithms to the power m when n goes from zero to n. And what we mentioned yesterday is to, to get a result to leading log, then we want to sum over alpha s to the four pi lin 
of this delta to the power n. And to get the next leading log, we want to sum over n alpha s over four pi to the n and then then fix the n minus one. Okay. Um, good. So, so coming back to, to where we were, I just wanted to show you what, what we needed to be doing and how the solving the algebraic equation is a method to, to obtain the scope. Okay, so now coming back to this full theory, we see that we have this alpha s multiplied by some, some large log. And so we see that what we're really going to need to do is we sum these logs. If we just want to go to leading order uh, to the leading log uh, resummation, we need to solve alpha s over four. We need to get a result, which is like alpha s over four pi log and w squared of n b squared all to the power n. And we want to add up all of it and possible ends from n equals one to infinity. So we have seen that we could do that for the for alpha s um, and also for for the mass and now as mentioned by solving the rges um, and what we do there is we're solving we're adding up logs which arise from divergences so that you be divergences that we do something like so if if our log was actually um something like m b squared over mu squared. Uh, so coming from some mu b divergence, then we would know how to use the RGE to resum these dots. And this is exactly what we would get. We would have a, a u b divergence here if, if our m w was infinity. And that is exactly what we have, however, in the effective field theory. We have the case where n w goes to infinity, and therefore these logs have actually become UV divergences. So that's what you see here in this one over epsilon, and then log n b squared over mu squared. Um, so in this effective field theory, there is going to be a way in which we can resum all these logs. <coughs> Does anyone have any questions? Uh, I have one question. So yeah. when we are writing the solution of alpha is from the RC, so that we are doing uh, from like uh, one loop diagrams. The alpha? Uh, so the RG. For yeah, alpha, that we are getting by uh, from yeah the, by from loop diagrams yeah 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 but there are like uh, terms uh, higher order terms in alpha s in this expression itself uh, so uh, for higher loop diagrams uh, there will also be uh, large logs but when we are resuming uh, we do not need those term or like oh. mm, try and say it once more i think i almost understood what you're trying to say just say it once more okay so the idea of resuming is to uh, add all the uh, alpha s ln and the log term mm. ah, okay now i understand so you mean you're saying that we need the terms from the higher loop diagram so we don't calculate the higher loop diagrams uh yeah yeah so that's exactly the trick that uh, our anomalous dimension at uh, the, the leading contribution to the anomalous dimension gives us all the information we need to resum uh, the infinite series of these uh, alpha s to the n log to the n. And then in order to get uh, the alpha s to the n log to the n minus one, we need the next leading term of the anomalous dimension or of the beta function. 
Ah, okay, I see. So from the hair uh, loop diagram, we'll get the like, next to leading log. Uh, yeah. Down. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. got it. Thanks. Okay, great. Yeah, so that's the that's the beauty of this this method that we don't need to calculate uh, infinite number of loop diagrams in order to get the information that we need to resum these logs. Okay, so so yeah, where was I? I, I had showed you here this is expression for the um, for this loop diagram in effect the field theory when we have this one of epsilon divergence and we have this log of mv squared and v squared. Now, now what do we do next with this? Um, so this one of epsilon is a UV divergence and therefore we need to renormalize it just as usual uh, in, for example, the MS bar scheme by removing it. Okay. Um, then we, we want to do some matching in order to get the Wilson coefficient in this uh, at next to leading order. And how we do this is um, by demanding that the IR physics of the full theory is reproduced by the effective field theory. So therefore we get an expression for this for fermion Wilson coefficient as a point to our view, which goes like GF1. So that's a leading order term as we derived above, uh, up to factors of root two, plus lambda one, alpha s mu of four pi, lambda mu squared and mu squared, plus lambda mu squared, Okay, so it looks like the Wilson coefficient uh, in the end just depends on mw squared over mu squared. Uh, and, uh, and the operator uh, and the thing that we had calculated here just depends on mv squared over mu squared. So here we could cancel the log. Here we could cancel the log by setting mu squared to mv squared. And here we could cancel the log by setting mu squared to mw squared, but obviously we can't do both. So in the end, what one needs to do is really do this uh, no, we need to know the anomalous dimension of the Wilson coefficient or of the operator. And then we need to solve the renormalization of the equation for this thing to, scale, to uh, go from one scale to the other. And if we, go, if we solve this renormalization of the equation um, and we obtain this relation between the operator at MW and the operator at MD, then we are able to resum all the logs that we need to do. Okay, so, so what, is the, uh, what does the renormalization equation look like? So we know that um, the, the mu dependence uh, of the operator should be canceled by the mu dependence of the Wilson coefficient. Um, and we know that the, uh, the renormalization constant of the operator uh, should, so we know that uh, we need to remove the divergences, but there's also a, a contribution to the, uh, 
to the renormalization function that comes from the weight function. Okay, so what in the end we get something that looks like this. This is just like we had before for the for the masses. But here we have that this is equal to mu d by d mu. So this comes from the four uh, four fermions in the operator. So this is simply the wave constant uh, renormalization, which looks like this. And this is uh, coming just from removing the uh, here. This term, yeah. And it looks like, um, Minus one over epsilon, lambda one, alpha s over four. Okay. So then one just has to integrate this uh, and you obtain the solution. which again looks very much like what we had before for the case of, for example, the, the mass. Okay, and because we want the result at what a, a, at the scale and w, we write this again for w, and the solution in fact turns out to be something like this. Okay, and as an exercise. For tomorrow's tutorial class, I want you to show um, that you get this result. And uh, where, sorry, A1, A1 is just gamma OF is equal to alpha S over four pi A1, where we defined it back here. Um, yeah. Does anyone have any questions about this? So, what is small m? Ah, mb, sorry, mb. And this is mb, sorry. Yes. More questions?
Okay, so so what we've seen here is really the power of the effectivity that uh, only by going into the effective field theory were we able to do this resummation of all the logs. Uh, if we had seen the full theory, we would have to calculate all the diagrams <clears throat> in order to get all the contributions in log m v squared or m w squared. By going to the effective field theory, we make this these logs as coming from really divergences. And that enables us to solve the RGE equation um, in order to go to, to resum all the logs at the leading log order. All we need to know is the leading contribution to the anomalous dimension of this operator, um, which we get by doing the one loop diagram, as we just saw. Um, and if we want to go to higher order, then we need the next we would have to do uh, the matching at, at two loop order. So, so this result is, is that leading log? Which is say LL. Um, For n l l, need we running at two loops. So in general, for accuracy at alpha to the n, we need to run at order n plus one. and match at order alpha to the n. Okay. So here um, we've seen the way that in general, uh, what is done a lot in, in the physics calculations that we need to we work in terms of these four fermion operators a lot. So we have to do a lot of running um, from one scale to another. The other thing that I haven't really mentioned is, is operator mixing. So in general, uh, you don't just have one operator, you have many operators contributing. And these anomalous dimensions that we saw are not simply, there's not simply one anomalous dimension for one operator, but you have anomalous dimension mix matrices, which mix contributions between different operators. So you have to consider all of the uh, Wilson coefficients, and then you have an anomalous dimension matrix, which describes how that they're run from one square corner. So this can become a little bit complicated. Um, the last thing I wanted to mention today. So, um, so tomorrow we're going to be looking at. I'm going to talk a little bit about. Uh, no, sorry. Later today, uh, this afternoon, I'm going to be talking about uh, about form factors, uh, about how to calculate exclusive processes, um, about the form factors that are required, and how to parameterize these form factors how to do a simple like consumers calculation. Um, and then in the net last lecture tomorrow, I'm gonna to be talking a little bit about crispy factorization. So, so these are the main elements that are required to perform calculations. For example, main, one case that many of you might have been uh, interested in is uh, e to k star error calculations. So for, in, for B to K star LL, um, calculating in terms of operators at leading order, you have an operator which is called 07. So let me just write this down. So here we're talking about a neutral B meson normally.
So in the full theory, no, no, not in the full theory. So one contribution. It's the operator going from B to S and emitting uh, a virtual photon, and this virtual photon then begins to two leptons. Um, but there's also contributions that come from these four fermion operators that we were just talking about. For example, this would be a, an example of a four fermion operator. And then one could admit again this a virtual photon that goes to high plus or minus. So this is a fermion loop. So it could be a C4 loop, for example, that actually gives the largest contribution. And this has been subject to a lot of discussion in the literature, this C4 loop. And I'll explain a bit why on uh, tomorrow. Okay, so uh I just wanted to show you briefly uh, what what the operators really look like um, in in this sort of a calculation. So I'm just going to share my screen a different window. Okay, so for this second diagram that I had drawn, uh, it's these six operators which are important. So these are the full set of four quark operators that are uh, which are needed for this uh, B to S calculation. So here you have the S quark. They're separated into left and right handed. Um, so for example, in these three and four, you would get Q and you have the same quark here. Uh, here you would also get the charm quark. So you have the BTS with the charm. This can be any quark. This is, these two also can be, can be any quark. The largest contributions are from these two. Um, the Wilson coefficients of the other ones are, are quite small. Uh, okay, so these, these are all the so and then here we have uh, the b going to the s and the photon and here we have the b going to the s and the g so that's 07 and 08 in in my language so uh so have a good look at that and then i want to show you the other operators um so here we have the effective hamiltonian um and we have contributions uh, which are proportional to lambda t, where lambda t is defined here, and proportional to lambda u. Uh, so the lambda t contributions, uh, so the lambda u contributions only concern these, these lowest two operators. Um, so here we have the, the four quark operators, one, one to six, and here we have um, additional operators. And so seven and eight, which I described again before, these are the ones with beta S gamma, beta S photon. And then we have, um, no, so this is beta S gamma, this is beta S gamma, where we have instead of PR, the right hand propagator, we have the left hand propagator. Here we have the, the gluon, um, again, right handed and left handed. Then we have operators nine and 10, which are also the most important because they're just exactly what's required for this process, B to S, mu nu. Um, this one is vector, this one is HL vector, O10. And here again, we have, we flip the PL to PR for the prime operators. And here we have scalars, 
and pseudoscalars. Okay, so this is our full set of operators. What could contribute to this beta K star LA process? So I just wanted to show you this. Um, so it's uh, so you can keep it in mind for uh, when we look at that again tomorrow. And as I said, uh, you get me, yeah, yeah. Excuse me, man. Yeah, yeah, please go question. ahead. For O9 and O10, we have B2S for left-handed, while for scalar and the pseudo-scalar, we have right-handed terms, and similar for the O7, we have also the right screen term. Yeah, okay. So this is because uh, here you want to take, uh, the primed operators are suppressed only, and, and these ones are, unsuppressed so uh, this will give the largest contribution the pl when you have the gamma mu and when you don't have the gamma mu then it's pr okay Is it clear? yeah thank you any other questions Okay, yeah. So, so as I was saying, um, what one really needs to do in, in full calculations is to uh, have the running of all of these operators together, which is a really large matrix that one needs to uh, solve. So it's a bit complicated. So maybe if any of you have questions about that, you can also ask me but I'm not gonna go into that in detail, but I can, I can give you some references. Okay, so yeah, talking about references, I just want to let you know uh, uh, some references to read more about, about this. So um, there's some uh, famous notes by Andy Buras on, uh, if you type, uh, Weak NLO Buras, you know, you will find them. Okay, I, I, I will write the, I will add the references to the end of my notes when I get into gym. Um, okay, any more questions? Okay, so I think I'm going to stop there and we can do more in a few hours. Okay, thank you very much, Aoife. So, um, yeah, we, we see you again at, uh, I don't quite know when, but some point later this afternoon. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah I, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. So if, yeah, if, if there are any more questions right now, should speak up if not if you, in a few hours you can pose them so yeah but it's good we can let everyone break for lunch now and come back in an hour for the tutorial okay all right so th thanks thank a lot you. bye see yeah. you later see you bye -bye. later see you then